the G Way Podcast with Deacon Dirty. What's up, y'all? It's your man G Way holding it down G Way Podcast, and I'm kicking it alongside with my man Deacon. Dirty. And we got a very special guest in the building today. Uh, I met this young lady via some family, and uh, they hit me up and said, "You gotta uh, interview her. She." She got a story to tell. And I was like, well, I got I want to hear a story. You know what I'm saying? So we got Miss Katina Davis in the house. What's happening? Hey, y'all. What's hey, up? y'all. What's going on? Thank what's you good for with you? Me. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate you taking the time to kick it with us right here on the show. Um, like I said off air, we're very conversational. Um, I did some homework and I dove a little bit into your world mm-hmm. uh, behind your back. Uh, but we're going to have you tell it so that, uh, you know, our, our listeners can uh, endear themselves to you. Okay. So let's start from the top. Uptown D.C. all day. Down. First and foremost. <laughs> <laughs> you better recognize. Absolutely. <laughs> Home of the go-go. R.E., J.Y.B., B.Y.B., uh, The Godfather, <laughs> Chuck Brown, R.I.P. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the best to ever do it. The best to ever do it. Uh, you said people look at you funny. When you pull up listening to that backyard. For sure. They always ask me what it is. The one lady told me it sounded like noise. I was like, lady, don't <laughs> ever go to like, DC. First of all, right, right, okay. right. You will get jumped. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that sucks. Right, right. It was so disrespectful. But to a lot of people, it does clink a little. They don't quite, they, don't they can't it. figure it. Yeah. You know, I can go in there and dissect the band. I'd yeah. be like, yo, right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I've been listening to it for a long time. You got to have a DC ear to understand. You got to have a DC like ear to understand. It's kind of similar to, I think not in sound, but in terms of the way you look at it, when you are in New Orleans, you mm-hmm. know that what's that sound? D? What what is? I don't know what it's called. Like that band sound. Yeah, they got going on. Mm-hmm. it's yeah, and they get down with they it. They sure do. And I'll be like, oh, that's cool, but uh, it's cool. But you let you know, Big G on stage, room. No, right, 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 right. Yeah, I'm saying, but that's what's up. So, born and raised, what part of DC? Northwest, Northwest, uptown. uptown. Um, you said Kansas Avenue. Okay, there we go. Now Kansas I've seen where Shepherd. you were. I went to Roosevelt High School. Oh, look at you! Yeah. All right, my brother went there. Now, now Rick when I, <laughs> right when I graduated junior high, I had the choice, and I was like, no, I want to go to Coolidge because that's where all my friends. Well, first and foremost, fix your face. You call <laughs> you right? <laughs> fix your face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, I, yeah, Coolidge. Y'all, I'm a Coolidge coat. Yeah. Even though I haven't been back since I left. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you got to go forward and not look back. But, you know, sometimes I feel bad that I haven't gone to, like, any reunion. Like, not one. You don't feel bad. Have I you? Mean, I mean, nope. So I that's DC what you say. And I have not looked back, to be honest with you. Um, that wasn't a when you, how long you been place here? for me. Four years this Four year. Four years, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I was just in a really bad place up there, which is what led to that abusive relationship. And that happened up there or down here? It happened here. I met him there. You met him there, and it started to, it take, started place to take place here. here. Do you think it started to take? Well, I don't want to get too headed a uh, uh, curve here. Uh, you put a pin in there. Yeah, right, <laughs> put a pin right there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to stick with growing up in DC. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm I'm sure we're different generations at mm-hmm. this point. Um, so, and I left long a, a while ago. I left mm-hmm. in '04. Okay. So well, I've been here a minute, minute, right? And and I like you said, I miss DC for the culture. I love going back. I go to Mar- uh, um, uh, Malcolm X Park just mm-hmm. so I can hear something. Mm-hmm. You know, I haven't been to a go go since I, but you know, I'm cranking it all yeah. day. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just taking in all the everything yeah. that DC has to offer, even just the way they just starting to reconstruct everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the best part for you growing up in DC? Um, I think it was just really the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Growing up. Like most kids in D.C., I, we didn't have a lot of guidance. We just pretty much did what we wanted to right, do. Right, right. You feel me? We raised ourselves, and I just love the camaraderie from everybody. One thing about D.C., those that are unified, they're unified. Right. And they stick together. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So it was the going to the carryout. Little things like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm the saying? The carry. You don't, Dick don't know about the they carryout. They don't know about the carryout. That I think they call, what y'all call it? Takeout? Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, man, it's <laughs> you know, just our culture. I'm going to tell you, though, you just mentioned mambo sauce. And I, I'm ashamed, you know what I'm saying? But I've never in my however long leg life that I have lived had mumbo Shut sauce. Your mouth. I kid you not. What? I wish you would have told me I got something in the cabinet. You know, they sell it <laughs> in the grocery stores now. Oh, do they? Yeah, it's here. Really? In capital, what is it? Capital City mumbo sauce? Don't know yeah, 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 yeah. it might be. Yeah. Really? Yeah, man. Well, okay, that's it. I'm going to Walmart. But I got you. You got me? I got you. Okay, I'm going to hold you. I got 
you. Facts. That's what's up. Because <laughs> I'm going to have to go get me some chicken. Sure. <laughs> some fried chicken and put that mambo sauce yeah. on it. Put it on your fries, too. On the fries, on the too, fries for too. sure. I remember uh, the, car- uh, the carry out where I live, right, like I said, on First and Kennedy. Uh-huh. I know uh, what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? It's right there by the alley. It's I know, I know. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Listen, my family's still in the building next door. So, wow. you know what I'm saying? Forever lived there. Yeah. Um, well, my mother just moved, but my brother and I, my cousin stays there. Um, they used to sell the fries, and we used, they used to melt the square cheese on it for cheese fries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? we just be outside in the cold, just tearing them things mm-hmm. up. But I just never had the mambo sauce. Did you? I, I'm surprised <laughs> at myself because they used to kill it. Damn. Everybody used to kill it. Go, go. Well, I for sure, I got you. I'm going to bring you a box. I'm going to bring a box back out here decorated with some confetti. Oh, sure. That's what's sauce up. Hey, you, we, that's on tape, B. We good? It's right, that's what, <laughs> it is documented. Right, it is documented. Right, right. So, go. Uh, obviously, go, go. Mm-hmm. Now, who are you cranking or who did you grow up listening to like that? Well, honestly, when I was younger, it was TCB. Okay. When okay. my tolerance was a little higher for noise and hollering, <laughs> you feel me? But because there's a lot of percussion. Yeah, you know. But BYB <laughs> is more my speed. That okay, mellow, so they kind of mellowing out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. See, I, I grew up. It's Chuck, R E, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes E U. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's others like kind of like those side bands. It was like. Cla- uh, class band and show. I don't know if you remember that. See, them. that's my brother's era. My brother's all over 40, so I know what you're talking gotcha. about. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, see, that's class band and Reds and the Boys, mm-hmm. Red and the Boys. Ugh, Ain't way nothing back. like it, man. Yeah, yeah. It's good music. You crank it here? All the time. In my house, in my crib. You know, I live in the suburbs and a Everybody lot of people don't look like us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, my right. My neighbor, when, I'm, when she came over one day, she said, what is that God awful music you're she listening said, God to? God awful. I said, not God Wait, wait, wait. Awful. She said it to you in your house? You know what I'm saying. I like to slam the door in that <laughs> like, lady's Like, why face. you here? You know, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but she was like, no, I've never heard anything like it. And when I began to explain to her and the Uh-oh. history of it, mm-hmm. um, and she actually knew who Chuck Brown was. Okay. But yeah. she, had, she didn't connect the dots. You always got to kind of start with Chuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She yeah. didn't connect the dots. I said, ma'am, have you ever done the butt in your lifetime? You been doing the butt? <laughs> you been doing the butt? I said, okay. Well, that's Let me see your TikTok. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Doing the butt. Uh, what was the other one? It's your thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's what uh, salt and pepper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. All right. So, all right. BYB, you cranking right now? Um, me, I still go back to the old school. So I'll throw on Chuck. Mm-hmm. I'll throw on the old school uh, Rare Essence because mm-hmm. I just like the old school sound of yeah. it. Um, and I don't really listen too much radio here to what they're playing here because for a minute it was what was it? What was that one? Crunk. Yeah, that was yeah. for a minute. Noise. Snap. No disrespect. What, 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 what <laughs> snap. Snap. That's yeah. right. That's right. That snap your finger thing. You're all right. Yeah. But that one I kind of like, though. You ain't going to lie. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that it's was the funny, joint. Because when I was younger, like I remember my mom, I would get in the car and turn the radio on to what I want to listen to. She'd uh-huh. be like, yo, I don't want to hear that so i never thought that i would be that parent like right right right, right that's get funny in the car now i'm like man turn that off i don't want to hear that no. my mother was in the car she came to visit and i said that while she she was here she was like she was like oh, mm-hmm. look at look look at history yeah. repeating itself it's funny <laughs> right right um so you graduated circa well if you don't want to tell 2006? 2006 okay all right 2006 okay that's what's up Thought you was 27. Thank you know what I'm saying? That. <laughs> that's what's up. Shea Butter be rocking, melon and popping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what's up. Um, from Roosevelt. Roosevelt. I, those were our, our rivals. They're still yeah. rivals. They, they are still. To this day. Yep. Wow. Still. Wow. Yep. And I was a cheerleader. So, of course, I was heavy in it. You know, I was. I was <laughs> you ugly and it's your theory. mama fault. Yes. And I was the ringleader, okay? <laughs> Shaking my head and all that. Like, right, right. Know? But yeah. I was telling my daughter, this is her sophomore year coming up. Okay. And I'm just encouraging her to get active and do everything right. she can. Because these are the best years of your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't change anything about high school. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, that's what's up. Um, so graduated high school in 06. What was the MO? What was the plan? What did you decide? You were becoming, no, jumped into banking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, look at you. You did do your I homework. Told you, yeah, I had okay. to, it's coming back. To, I got right. notes, but it's coming back to okay. me now. Jumped into banking. I did. Uh, why that field? 
it was I just needed a job. <laughs> like, y'all hiring? I had, at that point, um, I was supposed to go to school. Actually, I was I got accepted to Clark Atlanta. Oh, that's what's up. Um, and I got pregnant. So you're supposed to be here. I was supposed to be here. Right. I've all that was my school of choice. Oh, that gotcha. was my number one on the list. I gotcha. Um, so I got pregnant with my oldest daughter. Okay. And from there, I was like, well, time to grow up. You feel me? So. I applied for a job at the bank, and I ended up getting it. And it was mm-hmm. honestly one of the best careers of my life. I worked at the um, first African-American bank yeah, in Yeah, I saw that. Industrial what was the bank. name you remember? Industrial Bank. Industrial Bank. And they're still operating. Are they? Now, you know, this pause right here for a second. So African-American Bank versus, I guess, what we call what would be just a normal mm-hmm. bank. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I was going to say white bank, but it's just normal mm-hmm. bank. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What do you see the differences? What do you, What are the differences? They're more for the people. More for the people. I mean, hands down, this bank gave us opportunities back then when no one else did. You know, oh, it's like Mary give, and Barry. Yeah, they yeah. would give black people <laughs> loans back then. And even when I was working there, we had a very close relationship with Ben's Chili Bowl. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They were one of their biggest customers. You ever go so, visit D.C., you got to go to Ben's Chili Bowl. Definitely. Is Florida Grill still open? I'm not sure, but okay. I know Ben's is there. And then they opened a second location, Ben's Next Door. Okay. So, um, but when I was there, I would just see how much they did for the community and mm-hmm. how they were just such a pillar of the community. Everybody right, right. respected Mr. Mitchell, their family, mm-hmm. the bank. And it was just one big family. I love that job. That's what's up. I actually met Kelly Price there. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what's up. And you worked in banking for quite a while. 14 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was my career. So what were numbers your thing? Yes, they still so are. That, really? Mm-hmm. So you do accounting type work or CPA type? I could if I want, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so you left after 14 years and then you decided to do what? Human resources. That's when I came here. Gotcha. My banking career ended when I left D.C. Okay, okay. And honestly, it wasn't by choice. It was just what I fell into here. It's The job market here is hard, man. Mm-hmm. I remember I went on one interview <laughs> when I first got here, and there were 30 other people sitting there. I wow. swear. And I'm like, I said, we all here for the same job? They said, it was yep. like auditions. You know, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, dang. You know, so it was just really you got to take what you can get. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, this one lady, my, my ex-boss at my old job, I just really couldn't find a job, and I took a chance, got on a Facebook group and a mm-hmm. mom's group, and I was like, yo, these are my credentials. I got kids. I need help. If somebody could just give me a job, I'll do the rest. Right. And she inboxed me and was like, yo, I don't know you from a can of paint, but I want to help you. Wow. So she got me to interview, but she told me the rest was on me, mm-hmm. and I did my thing, and I was there for two years. So Okay. Yeah. Um, now, you've been here, you said since? November of 2018. Oh, it's all a few years you've been mm-hmm. here. I'll be here. Four Have you been years here before? Year. Then no. So, what do you miss, or what are the differences that you see between Atlanta and DC, and what do you miss about DC? Um, I miss the familiarity of everything. Okay, my friends, my family, knowing where I'm going. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's number one. Everything thirty minutes away. I can oh tell you that much. Pretty God, much. <laughs> you have to drive everywhere. Here. Right, you got um, to. Yeah. And the difference is, is that, you know, D.C. is just riddled with crime, man. Like, mm-hmm. And Atlanta is, too. But my goal was to move to the suburbs, you know, where my gotcha, kids for could have kids. better opportunities right, right. and things like that. So life is just <clears throat> much slower for us. Okay. And I'm good with that. Yeah. Yeah. What side did you land on? East? Cobb. Cobb. Okay. Cobb okay. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. You're in a nice area mm-hmm. up there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what are some of the things that you've started to embrace and enjoy about Atlanta? Um... I would say the slowness. It's a lot slower mm-hmm. than D.C. Yeah. Um, even in the backyard, there's this little rabbit. That's because that, the traffic is like parking lot, so that's why it's mm-hmm. so slow. I know you see me post this rabbit. Like, I keep telling this I rabbit, I got it, yeah. kids, bro. You can't live yeah, you here. You trying I to eat off your own. another mouth, you know. <laughs> so things like that are exciting mm-hmm. for us. Yeah, we yeah, can't yeah. go outside in D.C. and, and see, see no rabbit, you know. True that. So That's that's funny. Have but you seen right. any deer in your backyard yet? I have not. Not yet. We'll probably run from that though. Anything bigger than me, I'm out. <laughs> well, you know, they probably they're probably more scared of you than I you know. are of it, but but yeah, I've been seeing post you posting a, this rabbit is kind of taking refuge grass. in your yard. Yes. Yeah, they'll tap that grass too. He's been tearing up my grass. <laughs> All right, so you came here, you met someone in DC, mm-hmm. fell in like <laughs> fell in love, I guess. Barely, honestly. Okay, so you fell in like. Yep. 
And um, you all relocated here or you came? I came first. You came first. I came first. Okay. And he was coming to visit. Gotcha. But the way things started happening, he just felt obligated that he couldn't leave me here by myself. Things weren't going the way that I planned. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, yo, I cannot leave y'all down here like this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's how it started. Gotcha. So it was almost like a... Well, this is cool because now I got somebody who got my back mm -hmm. and support system, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah. Um, yeah, I moved here by myself uh, in 04, but I moved with people I knew, mm -hmm. friends of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't say that I was out here solo, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and so, and I, I guess we go in this direction because we're going to get to this book. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to be broken. Just know you can't stay there. It's a very so important thing. We're message. gonna get there, but I wanna walk through Absolutely. how this came to be, how it came about. Um and so he started staying here. Is that when things started to uh rear its ugly head? Immediately. 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 And I immediately And when you say immediately, like you like uh he loaded parked the car, brought in his clothes and the next day hell broke loose. Really? It was that type of thing. Like I I didn't see any signs. You know, no we signs. have been dating for some months. It's not like I moved here today and then he moved in tomorrow. Right, right, right. It wasn't that type of thing. This yeah. happened over the course of some months, you know, six to eight months and things like that. But mm -hmm. when I first moved here, my son got extremely sick. Um, okay. And with me just. And how old was he at that he time? He was less than a year old. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He was an infant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I was taking off work a lot to care for my son. Yeah. So naturally, you know what followed with that. Of course. I lost my job. Yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't afford that just moving here. Mm -hmm. So he had come to visit around that time and I was effed up. Like I was in a messed yeah, up yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. He was like, yo, I'm not, you're a female. I'm yeah, not yeah. leaving you here like this. Mm -hmm. So I thought that he was doing something commendable <clears throat> and trying to look out. Right. But he turned into a monster. Wow. Um, and you said there were no signs. So there was not at any time that whatever was occurring that you started to look back and be like, ah. Now that I know what I know, that. I'm educated about yeah, what yeah. domestic violence is, yes. Well, let's uh, define it for us um, because I, I'm sure it comes in, it has so many different faces to it. Um, what is domestic violence uh, domestic violence look like um domestic violence can be it could be emotional abuse or it could be physical abuse by an intimate partner or someone in your immediate family a lot of people have the misconception that it only goes on in relationships in relationships right anyone in your immediate family mother father brother sister in your home that abuse is still considered domestic violence right yeah and i guess they don't look at it that way though mm -hmm. when it comes to relatives mm -hmm. But it is. It's domestic violence. Like my daughter acting up, she got her butt whooped. Not domestic violence. That's not domestic violence. But if you abuse her, or you're emotionally abusing her, or you're neglecting her, gotcha. That yeah. Is okay. Domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I guess it started out verbally. It did. Verbally. Mm -hmm. Um. It, was it verbal put downs and that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> you know, I always wonder. You know, and it's easy for me to say what I'm about to say when females always tell that story, mm -hmm. it almost seems like it's the same story. Meaning it, the 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 um, self-esteem is always attacked first. And I always think, how uh, how does a guy get to you that much? I'll tell you why. Okay, because tell us why. they can smell it on you. When you're vulnerable and you have low self-esteem and you're not in the best place mm -hmm. as an individual, as a woman, a predatory man mm -hmm. can see that and smell that on you. I don't care what nobody say. They yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they'll know that they can prey upon you and break you down and manipulate you mm -hmm. to do whatever they want you to do because you're not strong enough right. to oppose. Now, <clears throat> being in that vulnerable state, um, I, and again, doing some research, is it as a result of childhood trauma that yes. you still had unresolved? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we can unpack yeah, that. Okay. For sure. That's so, what this is for. What was it that was still unresolved? Um, it was a lot. Um, mainly the divorce of my mother and father. Okay. A lot of people. How old were you? 15. Okay. A lot of people don't understand that children don't have the mental capacity mm -hmm. to process certain things. And it wasn't just the divorce of my mom and dad. So many things went on around that time. It was just too much for me um, to, to endure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And. Instead of my mom kind of clinging to me to try to figure out what's wrong, 
she completely moved forward with mm. the new guy. You know, every night she was with him, and I'm in the crib. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. She in D.C., I'm in Maryland. Right, right, right. You feel me? Right. So it was those type of things that started to just be a downward spiral for mm-hmm. me. My self-esteem took a hit. Um, I was pretty much just raising myself. You understand what I'm saying? I had no guidance. I had no... Siblings? No siblings. I had siblings, okay. but there's a big age gap. Gotcha. They were all grown. Okay. Um. So my oldest brother, I think he's... Don't kill me, Marvin. <laughs> he's like 50. Okay. And I'm 34. Yeah, right, so you right. Can see, see the gap there. Um, yeah. I had also been molested at four years old. Okay. Which is something that I had kind of blocked out mm-hmm. for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that that that's normal. That happens yeah. with children when there's mm-hmm. a traumatic memory. Right. Um, my my parents were also and drug I, addicts. I, was it by family mem- by no, a family member? Okay. It was not. Um, it was by one of my mom's friends' sons. Oh, but somebody still close Someone's to the family, still, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and she now, in my mom's defense, when she found out, she never took me back there. You know, she did her due diligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, my parents were drug addicts, so it was a lot that we went through as children. I got that you. was just unresolved. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, we talk about that sort of thing here. We're always saying, and I always say. <clears throat> excuse me i always say it's gonna come out somewhere mm-hmm. you know whatever happened here mm-hmm. it's gonna come out somewhere Facts. when you started to realize or when it started to show itself or unpack itself how old were you when did you start realizing you know were you whatever way you were acting and i probably was out when did you realize that I honestly didn't realize I had a problem until after I went through this abusive relationship at 33 years old. Gotcha. Um, I was just running. Mm-hmm. You know, you you know what yeah, I'm, I'm feeling. About. You. I yeah, was yeah, yeah. running from myself, just moving all wild and crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're hurt, you move from a hurt place. Mm-hmm. You don't process things True. the correct way that right, you should. Right. So, looking back on it, I could look back and be like, damn, I was crazy. Yo, I was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But I didn't know that I was hurting. Mm-hmm. It probably was one of those, that's just the way I am mm-hmm. type of things. It was. Right. Yeah. Until you realize that the way you are is because of other things. Because and of you other can things. can change that. Right. And, and, and you just said that, uh, mentioned, you know, people are hurting, uh, operating from a hurt place. Mm-hmm. So it's just normal. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> I know for me, well, I didn't grow up with any type of abuse in any kind of way. Mm-hmm. Um, my... I guess it's not even a word abuse I should even be using. That would be so disrespectful. I grew up without my father. Mm -hmm. So that bothered me. That was the thing that I acted out on. Um, But it wasn't until I moved down here that I started to, you know, wait, something is not right. right, Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I Mm -hmm. know something not right, but something not right. Mm -hmm. And I need to seek that something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, ultimately met him and so on and so forth. But Mm -hmm. nonetheless, you operate from a hurt place, mm-hmm. and that yeah. means anybody can get it. Mm-hmm. And it usually happens in a relationship. Yep. Um, so when you started to unpack it, were you as equally as verbal or, or abusive? or? Um, not in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, they will pull out the absolute worst in you. Mm-hmm. I found myself he would just do things to poke me so bad and I found myself turning into a monster mm. to defend myself. Right. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I didn't like who that was turning me into because my kids were seeing this They were seeing it, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I, I'm not that type of, I ain't, anybody who knows me, I ain't never been that type of person, that mm-hmm. type of mother. My kids are my life. Right. And since they've been on this earth, I have sheltered them from everything. But this one situation was just out of my control, mm-hmm. and it really broke me. Yeah, I, I guess because that was more up close and personal. Yeah. Yeah, they um, almost, in a sense, couldn't avoid seeing yeah. that. Um, so it started off with verbal attacking you emotionally, and then when, how long before it began, uh, be, before it became physical? Um. We got here, I would say maybe about six months after we got here. It didn't take long because we ended up becoming homeless. Okay, yeah. I have, you right. are the very first person I have said that out loud with. That has been something that I would not speak on for right. the longest time because yeah. I was ashamed. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were homeless for like six months. And we were from hotel to hotel right. down here. We were in Douglas County, Paulding <coughs> County. Mm. But every hotel we were in, there was a domestic disturbance call. Really? I called the police here in Georgia over 50 times on that man. Wow. 
and they kind of chalked it up as oh that's just domestic violence yeah that's, but that's not nothing cool. yeah that's not cool you uh, you would think with so many calls to your <clears throat> your residents they would be like wait a minute this is now the seventh time it was never that and I understand that you never really press charges against them because they would oftentimes, the police would oftentimes uh, confront you in front of him. Correct. And you already have this fear of him. Correct. And so you don't want to press charges because he's, he's standing, standing right, right there. there. Right. This dude is standing right, right. there looking at me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's another failure by the judicial system. Like mm -hmm. y'all are supposed to properly identify the victim and separate them and say, ma'am, sir, mm -hmm. are you okay? Yeah. Do you want to press charges? Had they done that, I would have felt a little safer. Right, like, right. Yeah. But he had already threatened my kids, threatened my family. Wow. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And so then at some point, the police decided you're the... Uh, uh, the bad the guy. The bad guy, yeah. And they arrested, arrested you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, was that because when they saw him, he was battered after yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah he put them paws on him yes, <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> <laughs> right 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 yes yeah i have a friend of mine's uh um this is up in actually she's from baltimore but i think she's in north carolina now but i remember she was telling me this story about this guy she was dating and he was being abusive mm -hmm. uh verbally and physically uh and she was this strong woman I, I don't even like to say that but yeah i think all women pretty much strong but um she it got to a point where it was enough was enough. She said she picked up this big glass ashtray, one of them thick old school ones, cracked them over the head. She said he shook so bad after she hit him. She scared her. That it scared her. Because <laughs> she mad. said he shook the ashtray. I ain't mad at it. And she said that was the last time that he even thought oh, <laughs> to do anything like oh, that yeah. ever again. Oh, yeah. Uh, how long did it take before you decided, all right, bro, enough is enough? Oh, I had been fighting back for quite some time. It was when I got when I got that job that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. When I got that job, my self confidence completely turned around because I'm the type of female I've always held my own. I've right, been working right. since I was 15 years old. That's so, when my mother put me out. I, so okay, okay. I've been working since a very young <coughs> age, mm. and all I know how to do is get it and right, stand right. toes down. So when I'm strapped and I'm I'm not in a good position, that doesn't make me feel good. Mm -hmm. That makes me depressed. Yeah, yeah. So of course, when I started getting things together and I can get me a car. Mm -hmm. He ain't like that. Of course. Of course, you still stuck mm -hmm. in the same spot. He can't and control you. Forward. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once I began to um, become more self-aware and regain my self-confidence, that's why I'm like, nigga, you're not going to keep doing right, this right, to right. me. Like, we're going to go toe-to-toe with -to -toe <laughs> you. What are you going to do? Yeah. You understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, And it had gotten to the point where I'm like, yo, why don't you just leave? But you want to continue to hold on to me and do this toxicity yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of just rolling out. Rolling out. Um, and so you said, I, I think I heard you saying something about it. it got so bad that he, he, when he had threw you up against a wall, the whole wall had your like body, body impression in it. Yeah, yeah. There was a hole in my apartment for a while that they came and patched up. And that your a, kids have to walk out and see every that every day. time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you also mentioned that during one of the, um, melees, uh, that he threw you over the balcony. He did. And all your stuff and that sort of thing. He did. And I mean, granted, we lived on the bottom floor, but he threw me in some bushes. Like but I over the no balcony, still over the balcony. Shoot. Yeah. Now, now, <laughs> now, looking at you, when I saw you when you came in the studio, you're you're kind of petite, so that's that's not good. Oh, that don't mean nothing. Well, I'm petite, but I can get down <laughs> with it now. I'm saying a, a man throwing. You know, right, you know, right. Yeah, throwing, yeah. Yes, on, yes. That's, so it was crazy. And so, how what was that like when you had to knock on your daughter's window? to get back in, to get let back in. I just felt just like a failure. You understand what I'm saying? No parent wants to expose their children to that. It was early in the morning. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to be feeding their minds, getting ready for school in a calm, happy place, and here we are acting a damn fool. Right, Excuse right, right. my language. Mm -hmm. you know this what happened I'm in the morning. Yeah. That's why I was so mad. Now That's he why woke he got up beat like up. He woke up. <laughs> 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 I'm like, it's, it's 8 o'clock. Well, Cat Williams said, you banging on cereal? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> Hey, right, yeah, it's too early for that. Come on. Yeah, but but it goes back to even what you just said, what we just were talking about. Hurt people hurt, hurt, hurt people. people. And it, he it, was very hurt. Yeah. Broken. It's a it's a fact. Uh I posted something this was some years ago. Uh look, I don't hurt no I don't hurt people I don't hurt no more, so I don't hurt people no more, or something mm -hmm, like that. Because mm -hmm. once you get to a place of deliverance, healing, 
uh, you start to see things a little bit different. And again, when you're operating out of hurt and you don't even know you hurt, yeah. it's just that's the way that I am. Yep. Until you realize something's something wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah. And so how long did it take after that? Um, did it still go on? Just, were you still months going in? And mm -hmm. Honestly, when that happened, the day that I got arrested, um, it was only a few weeks before he was out of my hair. Okay. Because I didn't go back home at that gotcha. point. I had went to my friend's house. She was there for me the whole time. Danielle, mm -hmm. I always mention her. Um, I really appreciate her. Um, but what happened after that is where the failure came in. You understand mm. what I'm saying? So I had applied for the TPO when I get out, mm -hmm. when I got out. But of course, because I got arrested, I looked like the aggressor. Right. So when I got in there and I'm explaining everything, they flat out denied it. They was like, no. So why were you arrested? That's what I, you asking the same question I've been asking <laughs> for two years. Yeah. But he said that it was the same officer that had been coming to my crib. Right. And he knew what was going on. He mm -hmm. said, but you know, I don't, ha I don't want to take you, but I have to, because you did more harm to him than he did you. And I'm sitting here looking and I'm like, like this time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when he was on his way taking me to the to the police station or whatever, that's when all the information right. Comes you said he offered some advice now. Yes, right. but where was this mm -hmm. when I called y'all twenty times? Right, ago? right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you remember what he said? Absolutely. He told me when I got in the car. He said, "Um, when you get out, you need to apply for a temporary protective order. This is where you need to go." Now, mind you, that might seem like common sense, but mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. someone who's never been in an of abusive course. relationship, yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? So, because first of all, somebody be like, "Well, what's a TPO?" Right. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. He told me all the avenues I needed to take. If they didn't grant it, he told me I need to document everything. Every everything that I put in that book mm -hmm. is what he told me to do. Wow. Um. So after they denied the TPO, he pretty much essentially took over my crib. Like he was a demon. Wow. He was like, I'm not leaving. I'm not getting out. And, and mind you, he ain't paying no bills. The nigga was flat broke, bro. Mm. And it pissed me off so <laughs> bad. You know, you just going to take over my house. Right, just, right, right. That that part is called economic abuse. I wanted to make that clear. Got you. Right. Economic I've heard of that. Economic abuse is yeah. a thing, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, when they control your money or they control your house. So yeah. he had essentially just taken over my crib. Wow. Um. So when I went back, like, three days later, all his stuff was gone. So I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, my God. He finally left. Mm -hmm. So a few days pass. We chilling. And there's this dude that lived upstairs from us. He happened to be from uptown. Okay. And so they had <laughs> clicked up for gotcha. a while. Right, right. And I pull up to come back from the grocery store. He getting out the car to walk upstairs to his house. And I'm like, he been up there the all this time. time? Wow. So that's when things started. So that's he up there like the probably like. Started. And man, shorty downstairs tripping, you know what I'm saying? Let me mm -hmm. let me parlay with you for a minute. Mm -hmm. Dude just going with the flow. Yeah, yeah, that's when everything started. He started vandalizing my property. He vandalized my car. F nigga stuff, you know. Yeah. He put sugar, bleach, a lot of stuff that's in my That's corny tank. stuff to me, man. It's um, so corny to me. <laughs> yeah, like he flattened my tires. Wow. Um, He followed me to the nail salon, stalked me, because I wouldn't answer his calls. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. I meant to bring the folder where you could see how many times he called me, but he called me over 150 times in one night. I, you said something about yeah. you taking that folder to, I guess, the police department yeah. and slamming it down yeah. saying, look at this. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? It was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and when I started ignoring him, he followed me to the nail salon and I'm sitting there, my feet, I'm signing a thing to pay mm -hmm. while my feet are in the bowl. And I look up and I'm like, oh my wow. God, you know, I was yeah, tripping. Yeah, yeah, of course. And the lady, I come there all the time. She was like, are you okay? Do you want me to get rid of him? I said, call the police now. Right, right, right. And he's like, I'm not leaving until you talk to me. I mean, making a scene. And, um, he's like, I'm a killer. He mm -hmm. flat out said it in a nail salon. He was like, I'm gonna kill that bitch. It's wow. My yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so at that point, I went back and I'm like, yo, y'all denied this restraining order mm -hmm. and this man is devolving. There's yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah. wrong with him. Mm -hmm. He's gonna kill me mm -hmm. if you don't keep him away from me. Yeah. Um, so I, I came in there with all my information and this time I had a woman who looked like me mm -hmm. and she granted it. Gotcha. And when I got out of there, he violated it two hours later wow. after it was served to him. Mm -hmm. I stood in my parking lot and watched the same officer mm -hmm. serve him the TPO and told him he could not come anywhere near me. Yeah. And then two hours later, he's trying to get in my crib. Wow. And they arrested him that day. And so when they arrested him, did he stay in long? And where is he now? 
Um, when they arrested him, he did. He he's still in there, as far as I know. Um, okay. But they're supposed to notify you when when, when they, they get re- out. Very released, yeah. He was sentenced to five years. Okay. So I'm. And this I'm, was when? What year was this? Twenty eighteen, you said. No, this all happened in 2020, the height of the oh, pandemic. Oh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, this is fresh. Oh, so that had to be even rougher because nobody can go nowhere. Yeah, that's, what, that's why there everything you go. started happening. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's making that's sense. What, Way that's more what, sense that's now. That's what happened. We was around each other and things just started escalating. Mm-hmm. And I was not going to sit there and let that man beat on me all day. Yeah, yeah. No. I think... I think during that time, didn't like domestic violence it peaked. cases kind of peak? Yeah, that's crazy. So there are people together who can deal with each other passing, Mm -hmm. in passing, Mm -hmm. but they can't when they're around each other 24-7, especially if you're not in a place or... or like if you're home where you can't just separate, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? If you, you know what I mean? A one bedroom. Right. Yeah, if you're in a one man. bedroom, you, every time I turn around, it's you. It's you know you. what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was a very difficult person to be, deal with. Like I couldn't deal with him even without When they watched the pandemic. The you feel me? Like I wanted away from that man. So he right. was just, he was unstable. Damn. And I didn't see any signs of this mm-hmm. until I got with him and I kept calling his parents and I want to make this abundantly clear. I don't care how grown your grown son is. Mm-hmm. If he is out here putting his hands on a woman, it is your obligation to intervene and come and get your son. Come get, uh, yeah. Come yeah. on. F- true that. True that. For real. So yeah. I kept calling and I'm like, yo, your man is tripping. Like, please come <laughs> and get him. Like, this is not a yeah. drill. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> right. And they're like, he's your problem now. Wow. So they all knew it was something wrong with him. Yeah. Yeah. I think family always do. They know. Yeah. They was just happy to be rid of him. All right. There you go. Not not our problem. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so you say he's in, sentenced to five years. Um, so how are you post suffering from PTSD? Mm-hmm. You know, I was just having this conversation with someone recently. We were talking about military, though. Um, and we always hear the stories of guys who suffer, you know, military, ex-military who mm-hmm. suffer from PTSD. But you don't hear a lot of stories of the women from ex-military um but just overall just ptsd and women you don't hear a lot of the stories uh what does that look like because i hear you're triggered by songs yes i'm honestly i'm still triggered by a lot of things um cobb county i don't go everywhere in cobb because there are places i can go and be like damn he beat my ass right there Uh, you know what i'm saying so there are a lot of places that i avoid that are triggers for me yeah yeah and honestly i was very ignorant to ptsd before this i thought it could only happen to people like you said from active military yeah yeah yeah. service but it happens to anyone who goes through a traumatic experience yeah and for a while um i would jump when people would knock at the door I would sit in my crib with all the curtains closed. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Songs trigger me. I would, I nearly jammed my finger one time trying to turn the radio off. Wow. Because he was a singer. So certain songs for me, I can't listen to anymore. Certain artists, my favorite artists, wow. I don't do it anymore yeah. because it triggers me yeah. that bad. Um, I've learned to better manage it now with the help of therapy. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. But before... I would be really jumpy. It would be a problem. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. How important is therapy? Very important. Um, I don't think that you could properly heal from a, an experience like this without mm-hmm. therapy. Without it's therapy. not a bad word. It doesn't make you crazy. Mm-hmm. Talk to somebody. Yeah. And, it, you know, I know in the black community there's a stigma. Mm-hmm. Well, especially it used to be a real big stigma when it came to counseling mm-hmm. and therapy. I am all for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, before I even came down here, I used to – you know, sit with my pastor and get counseling and all mm-hmm. kind of stuff and pour this stuff out like mm-hmm. what I'm thinking what I'm feeling uh we've been on each other for quite a few years at this point so we sit around and we man talk so there's always a lot of yo yada 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 yeah. Yeah, we come in and just get off just our get chest. off our yeah. chest yeah. you know what I'm saying start. That's right awesome. you know what I mean and that's it's needed you got to release yeah. yeah and so what were some of the things that you discovered? Like, what was some of the things that you had to maybe confront in, during therapy? Oh, man. That relationship with my mom, I had to dissect that thing um, myself. There were parts of me that were ugly. Mm-hmm. I had to do a lot of changing and self-reflecting. Yeah. Um, because I used to be able to cut people off at the drop of a hat. And that's not normal. Oh, Lord, I need therapy. You, yeah, Man. 
Because I can do that like it ain't like Listen, I'm a hit the switch right now. I can just do it. There is no curing the relationship with me. You, you, I'm done with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and all of those were defense mechanisms to keep people from hurting me because I had just been hurt. And so that's much. something. Yeah, wow. You might be teaching me something, right? <laughs> yeah, I had trust issues. I um, oh, oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, because I, I, I say that all the time. I got trust <laughs> issues. <laughs> Look, with my couch, we about to lay it right now. That'll be hundred and fifty dollars. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So those are the things you had to kind of confront. Yeah, You're like, and I had to like if you have gone through something with your parent, I want to make it abundantly clear, man, mm-hmm. that there may be things that your parent has not disclosed to you. You know, f- yeah. My whole life, I've longed for like a love from my mother that I just felt like I wasn't getting. But it wasn't until I experienced this Mm -hmm. and my mom and I were able to come to a calm place and talk to each other, not at each other, that I was able to understand that she couldn't give me something she didn't know how to give. That's something I noticed, like, you you know, know, when I, like, you know, when I see people in therapy sessions online and on TV, they always, um, so tell me about your childhood, because you got to start at the root. I I noticed they always start right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Are you asking me to tell you about my childhood? Is that no, what you're no, no, Oh, okay. No. <laughs> but yeah, that's the question. Yeah. So I mean, once I but I'm sure that out, you had to go back and yes. address it for yes. sure, right? Yes. My yeah. mom was a survivor of domestic violence. Her mom. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, my grandmother, she was kind of abusive to my mother verbally. Yeah. You know, she told her once, I think, I wouldn't give a damn if you jumped into the Mississippi River. Or something oh, wow. like that, my mom said. So Imagine getting something like that from your mother. What you think she gonna give me? She don't mm-hmm. know how. Yeah. yeah. So it took me years to just understand that and meet her in the middle where she is. Mm-hmm. And now that's my girlfriend. <clears throat> you I talk to yeah. her every day. You can see her as a person. Yes. Right. Yes. I always tell people this was in the mid nineties when uh me and my mother I was horrible to her. Well, I was horrible to myself, but mm-hmm. she had to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Whether that was, you know, come get me out. You, yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, she had to yeah. deal with all the crap that I put her through. Yeah. But we had this con- conversation one day. We were packing. And I, you know, make the long story bearable. Uh, she, I was talking about something with my kids' mothers. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was like, well, boy, you picked them. <laughs> you know, and that made me think right there. I was like, shoot. But the one <laughs> of the, <laughs> I mean, because I didn't look at it that way. I'm thinking they, but if, if who's the common denominator Touché. in that? Right, right, right. I mean, <laughs> it would be me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> accountability. But one of the things she said to me, uh, I was saying something about something, and she said, boy, I didn't know what I was doing. And that, those words right there changed, changed something. everything. I was like, wait a minute. This is a person. Not just my mother. This is a human being who doing the same, probably did the same doing dumb the stuff. And doing the best she can. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, and now we cool, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because before we could, we, yeah, yeah. we cool I, now. I get what you're saying. Right, I yeah. And so you and your mom reconciled mm-hmm. and was able to forge a relationship. What about you and your father? I've always had a good relationship with my dad. Okay. Um, he's always been in my life. Um, the only thing was just that my mother, you know, I won't say that there were a lot of mistakes that she made. There was mm-hmm. just a lot of things that she missed. Gotcha. You feel me? I, I'm with you. And I feel like had things been different, my life wouldn't have taken this turn. Mm-hmm. But I don't regret it. Things happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. I have two daughters who I'm now able to parent in a better way based right, off right. of my experiences. Gotcha. And my son, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're in to the book. Mm-hmm. It's okay to be broken. Where did the title come from, and what is the book? What do we get from the book? Oh, man, follow me. What are we at, Deke? This one? Two? All right. So the title actually came from one of my friends, actually. She didn't even know she was giving it to me, Mm -hmm. um, but she made a statement on Facebook when I first started coming out publicly, just healing publicly. Nobody knew anything. I stayed silent for seven months because I was very fearful of what people would think about me. Um, and when I came out and started talking about it, she made a statement underneath one of my statuses that was like, thank you so much for being transparent. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much you're helping people and showing people that it's okay to be broken. Just know you can't stay there. 
and it stuck with me. That was even before I wrote the book. Okay. Um, so I decided to name it that because the book is about transformation. It's about a journey, and it's about being in a broken place and understanding that you're in that broken place, but knowing that you can't stay there, and you have to heal and move forward. Yeah. And that's where that came from. And also – what came first was it the book or was it uh the melanin the, the melanin mother the melanin motherhood because that was going in one direction and it shift it shifted its mission yes. yeah well, look at you I'm well, you know you know yeah you know i mean yeah. <laughs> so, and that's why i make the big bucks and <laughs> um the melanin motherhood was something i actually started before i left dc mm -hmm. and it was for single moms um just empowering them helping them out with whatever i could pampers all that. That was before I had grants. I was doing this stuff from my own okay. pockets because that's how much I cared about Right, people. right. So once I went through this experience and this happened to me, I'm like, yo, I have to do something. I can't just sit out here and let people not be aware of what domestic violence is and mm -hmm. what emotional abuse is because I didn't know. So that's where that came from. And my content or social media is all preventative education i'm telling you what a narcissist is i'm yeah. telling you what emotional abuse is how to heal from that yeah i'm telling you what the warning signs are um and recently we've um, been able to partner with a lot of nonprofits um, okay. throughout the area mm -hmm. a young lady was murdered last week by her child's father i noticed that on your yeah. ig page you post those stories yes yeah until you know Yes. That sort of thing. So, yeah, she she was married by her partner, you said? And I've been helping that family. We've been able to raise over $500. We got her a new bed. Okay. Um, and I'll be attending those home-going services on Monday. So mm. my families are not just stories for me. There mm -hmm. is personal for me. And I get involved and I help. Yeah. In your introduction, you, you, you even say, and you mentioned it earlier, he could smell the weakness on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you put that in bold capital letters. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a narcissist and a predator knows they know what they're looking for they know you know i used to when i was little or younger whatever you want to uh, call it uh when i would watch like wildlife shows mm -hmm. i would always say why did the lion why did they pass all of them just to get to that one mm -hmm. and then one day it just clicked i was like because that's, that's the, weak, the one. weak one out of the whole pack. Out, of the out of the whole, whole pack. pack and they can spot and you. they can spot it yeah yeah and it's weird how they but you know, anyway, how they communicated like that one right there, dude. You know what I'm saying? And you said, were there any warning signs? There were, cause he essentially stalked me in the beginning. I kept telling him no. Yeah, I wasn't trying to. Until he him. showed up with them roses. Yeah, and, and I'm like, well, hmm, niggas ain't doing that. You know? <laughs> like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> he might this? be different. <laughs> Trash. Hey, we ain't all the same. That's all of I want to say. Right, right, right. You, are not. you are not. So if I show up with some flowers, you know what I mean? It's coming from a good place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the safety plan? A safety plan. How do you develop it? Basically, a safety plan is something that you come up with um, to exit the relationship in a way that reduces the amount of harm to the person, to okay. the victim, and their family. Okay. So pretty much you can reach out to an organization like myself or the National Domestic Violence Hotline, mm -hmm. and those trained professionals will come up with a way to help you exit the relationship. And it's kind of probably created or centered around you, your uh, specific situation, mm -hmm. right? It it's not like a blanket thing, Correct. right? It gotcha. Has to be strategic and plan based on what your situation. Yeah. Is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and when did? Why did you uh, come up with the melanin motherhood? I mean, I get the, the title, name? yeah, but why? Because um, there's a great need in our African American community. I'm black, and mm -hmm. I get that question a lot. Um, why? Why do you only? help black people let me let me fix that right now if someone who is an african-american comes to me and says hey i need help i'm going to help yeah, yeah, yeah. however my primary responsibility is educating my people and empowering our community yeah because that's where the greatest need is we don't know what domestic violence is and you want to know why because it's in our homes and we think that it's normal they think that is normal right it's not right. and that's where we come in to say hey and it's no. crazy how chaos can be looked at as normal Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why we get into these toxic relationships and think that, oh, he loved me. We just going through something. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah. No, love don't hurt, boo. I like the crossword puzzle you have in here. I'm worthy of love that doesn't hurt. And you have the words that you find in a crossword puzzle. That's, I that's tried pretty to make cool. It interactive, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No, that's hot. I've never seen that one before. Thank you. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> okay, okay. Words like talk, respect compromise honesty simple yeah simple, simple words, words yeah but these are things that will be lacking if you're not in a healthy relationship someone should always want to hear your opinion and hear you out you should always be able to compromise 
And nobody should be always on top of your back all the time. Hello. Folks should always be able to have Like, you ain't got nothing away. to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to go see a movie by yourself? You nothing? nothing. <laughs> Can I live? Right. right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah, I see, that's me. I'm a solo. I like to I like to move about the cabin, you know, yes. separate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Depart. You know what I mean? And he would never let me have time to myself. I would go to the nail salon. He, I'm going to ride with you. Because even in a relationship, yeah. you're going to need your me time. Yeah. You know? Got yeah. to. Got yeah. to. Um, I'm trying to make sure I, I hit the things that I wanted to ask you about. Um, and I think I did. So if people want to get your book and they want to bring you out to speak, uh, find out more information of somebody going through mm -hmm. domestic is uh, violence issues. How can they get in contact with you, get a hold of your book, that sort of thing? So um, if you need assistance or you just want to check us out, we do have a website. Okay. It's www.themelaninmotherhood.org. Mm -hmm. um, the book is selling there. You can order from my website. Okay. You can also order from Amazon, Rakuten, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, and mm -hmm. Walmart. Okay, that's what's up. Um, wow, this this is good. I like that. Uh, is there a, a number you can give out for like a domestic violence hotline or that sort of thing? Um, the National Domestic Violence Hotline is 1-800-799-SAFE. 1-800-799-SAFE. Okay. Yes. That's what's up. Um, so what's next for you? What's what's on the horizon? What are we what are you getting into? What's uh um, currently, I have a self-love book series for children that's okay. in the works of being published. No. Um, loving Little Me, Loving Dark Skin Me, mm -hmm. um, because those are things that really damaged my self-esteem as a child. I'll never forget it. I had a, a substitute teacher. We were at lunch, and there was this mixed girl. She was my best friend back mm. then, and I, I was no more in the fifth grade, and she called somebody ugly and hurt the child's feelings. Mm. And the child went and got the teacher but when she got over there, she thought it was me. And she came and said, I know you ain't calling nobody ugly. Oh, wow. What kind of adult says that? Right. You feel me? Right. So that has never left me. And I think that that was the reason I had such low self-esteem with my, my complexion. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, I would wear makeup that was a skin lighter, looking crazy. It did not match my neck. <laughs> But I didn't care nothing about that. That lady broke me Yeah, so no, bad. I'm with you. With those words. Those so few words, yeah. So that's why these books are important because it starts when they're children. Mm -hmm. If they don't know their worth and, you know, how beautiful they are when they're children, they'll grow up and accept anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Or grow up acting out. Absolutely. Yeah. Or become abusers themselves. Or become abusers themselves. Like I said, it, I always say it's going to come out somewhere. Somewhere. Give it, just give it a chance. Give it a um some time mm -hmm. we don't know where and we don't know when but it's mm -hmm. gonna happen yeah well uh was that the door i don't know oh. i well, went to the uh, the interview out there. I got <laughs> well miss katina dropped with the thing about the teacher i'm like wow. right yeah 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 that right there is crazy my mom remembers that she never forgot it really mm -hmm. so you went home and told your mother about she ain't going to the school she ain't making she a special did. trip oh she did my mother was something else back then. <laughs> okay she was there but she put you them know. paws on her <laughs> <laughs> But just teach, just teach you a lesson. Okay. <laughs> and that's the type of mom she was. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. mess with her babies. You feel me? You yeah. don't touch the cubs, man. You don't right. touch the cubs. Yeah, yeah. So with that, um, I've also started hosting um, author pop-up shops. That's what's so up. So the first one is going to be in August. Just to have give authors a space to sell their books. Everybody nice. else has pop-up shops, but where's the one for the books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to do that. And okay. And rolling with that. That's and what's up. And of course, up. the Melanin Motherhood. We're going to keep helping people. Well, I wish you much uh, success with it. Uh, Thank you. I'm so glad you don't look like what you've been through. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, yeah. that's Jay Nance. Uh I want to tell her to hold on for a second. Uh, you out here doing what you're doing, and uh, just you know, I'm, I'm I'm proud of you, and you know, I'm looking forward to all the great things. And y'all go pick up the book. Yes, it's please. okay to be broken. Just know you can't stay there. You can't stay there. You we all been there, but you can't stay there. That's what's up. It's your man G Way holding it down. G Way podcast, and I'm kicking it alongside with my man Deacon. Y'all know what it is. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy G-Way holding it down. And I want to thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the G-Way Podcast. Now, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Click that notification bell to stay up on all the latest videos and content that we post. And uh, we just appreciate everything. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at G-Way Podcast. Tune in.